Hello friends. So we have seen what transformational generative grammar is. Yesterday we had some idea about it. I mean in the last class, yes. So here we have transformational generative grammar. First part, uh, the second part we saw. That is generative. What is generative means? That is to predict all the possible well-formed or correct sentences of the language. That is generative means. By a finite set of rules, you, are, you can predict or you can produce infinite number of sentences. Now what is transformational grammar? It's a definition by Mark Lester. He's an authority on that. So it's a TG grammar, a, trans, a transformational generative grammar. It's a recursive rule system. So we saw in the last class, recursive means repeating the same structure. First we took the example of a concrete noun that is modified by a prepositional phrase or place that ends with the concrete noun and that is again repeated. That is, uh, we said that the example that we saw yesterday, that is uh, the man in the store. So the man in the store across the street like that. We saw that. And uh, says a TG grammar is a recursive means you are repeating the structures, rule system that rewrites abstract classes as sequence of subclasses. That you can see your sentence S, that is, you rewrite it as abstract classes. So, this. so what we do is a sequence of subclasses. Rewrites abstract classes. This is abstract now. S is abstract. So you are rewriting it in subclasses. NP, auxiliary, NP. And that is rewritten again as sequence. You see like this. Determiner, noun, auxiliary tense, and you have got uh, the main verb, and then you have a complement, or you can say, and then B, like this. So this is. So what happens here is, rewrites abstract classes, S is abstract class, as sequence of subclasses, one, two, three, and then and again each of these subclasses are rewritten as sequence of each subclasses. Here, the determinant noun subclass of NB, auxiliary, tense, also we know, Auxiliary also optional items like model, model, then progressive, uh, perfect, and progressive. This also we have seen, isn't it? Yes. Free structure now we have seen this. Progressive, and then V and then B and so on. So, you are, according to this definition, Mark Lester says sub, one abstract, then subclass, then again subclasses. Still, until we reach the level of words. So here we come to the level of words. The man uh, stands present. Uh, eat. Uh, eat. Determinant. And now, and apple. So that is. And plus. It, it's. This is. So this is the model of a T. There is a, there is an abstract class, subclasses, again subclasses. Finally, we reach the level of words or lexical items. So this is T G. Well, once again, a T G grammar is a recursive rule system. Now this can be applied to infinite number of sentences. This is a recursive, recursive rule system that rewrites abstract classes as sequence of subclasses and again each of these subclasses are rewritten as sequence of each subclasses until we reach the level of words. This is the definition of an object. Standard definition, right? Is that clear thing? Such abstract subclasses, again subclasses, and then we reach the level of words. Yeah.
So the second component of this uh, transformational generative grammar, of course, uh, in the title you can see it in the first one, first component, isn't it? A generative transformational grammar is difficult or it, it looks clumsy. Now. Therefore, transformational generative grammar is easy now. Uh, so transformation. Now, what is transformation? Transformation is changing the form. Now, transformation or transformational part of it tells that how the relationship between different forms of the same sentence. That is transformation. Means. Different forms of the same sentence. The classic example given by Chomsky himself is active passive. The active passive will be, the relationship will be active is the input and passive is the output. In transformation, that's what you do. You take an input and then you change it. That means both are different forms of the same sentence. So how are they related? That is what transformational aspect of this grammar examines. Understand? Now let's see, according to Chomsky, it will be uh, written like this. Active will be active is written in P1 then auxiliary V plus N B two. This is active. Passive will be N B two plus you have auxiliary plus um, B E N plus V plus N uh, by by plus N B one. So this is active and this is passive. Now what happens here is in transformation you insert some rules like by insertion rule. See? Or B E N insertion rule. Let's see. Let me look at the look at the trees, then you will see. First one the detective, the detective saw the accident. This is what we call the active sentence. And this can be, you can make it explicit sentence, yes. You have got NP, auxiliary, VP, uh, NP you have determinant. Now, VP you have tense, that is uh, tense, tense here is past, isn't it? So, past. And then verb is a C, and you have got NB, that NB is determinant and noun. So, this is the active. Active sentence is like this. Now, when it comes to passive, what I have to do? You have to change the whole thing now. Then you have instead of this NB1, you have NB2. Here, NB1. That is the change. Change takes place now. Yes. NB2, NB1. Now, NB2 here is the accident. So this past. And so, we have got for passive we have to have a B E N B E N insertion rule here. So you have to say you have to insert here B E N plus C. That is okay. C the uh, sorry by by insertion here comes by by the dictative. So here we have two transformational rules. What are they? First is B E N insertion. So that's what we did. And so B E N comes here. Secondly, by insertion. By insertion rule. So that's why it comes here. Now, if I put it in the phonetic shape, 
form you will get like this the accident the accident b past tense so was en will go to c is it is c plus en c plus en is seen so accident was seen by the detective the accident was seen by the detective detective accident was seen by the detective understand that is the difference i will i will do this once again here so that it is to make things clear to you both the trees side by side i will draw then you will see the difference between active and passive you already know it you know it isn't it but the thing is that in uh, tg grammar what you do what you know you are making explicit nothing new what you know you are making explicit or say the active sentence will be active tree here that will be that will look like the s n b auxiliary b p send it n b auxiliary b p n b will be determiner and n b determiner and now the dictative dictative here past so here c here n b the determiner and noun the the dictative the accident so this is the c past c plus past will become so i understand so the dictative so the accident now passive will be the passive sentence would be s and b uh auxiliary bp and you have nb the here it is nb2 eh? this nb2 or this is nb that will do and you have got the uh determiner now the accident the accident past send it then you have got the insertion b e n b e n insertion and you have c and n p n b 1 here you have got n b 1 send it yeah then then you have got a uh, determiner noun the sin the action the dictative by by insertion rule you are by here so two rules here here you are you are applying two rules two two transformation rules that is one is b e n insertion and then by insertion then you will get the the action was b past tense so past tense of b is was e n will go here e n so was seen by the dictionary so there is also change nb1 becomes nb2 in passive nb2 becomes nb1 in passive so this is transformation that is relationship between different forms of the same sentence both these sentences are same only the form is changed so this is transformation and this is the example that is given by a jobs to himself what is meant by transformation changing the form and the classic example is this okay so you have got like this many rules transformational rules so that like do insertion rule so subject subject object switch rule that's what we did just now switch rule nb1 becomes nb2 nb2 becomes nb1 that is Understand? So in 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 
changing the active and the passive we apply three rules first is the NP switch rule switch rule by this what we do is NB1 becomes NB2, NB2 becomes NB1. The second rule is B, B E N insertion. Insertion rule. And the third is we have by insertion. By insertion. This is. So we need three rules for transforming an active into passive. Understand? Once again, let me tell you, please do not think that. Is anything anything new? What we know, you are making explicit. Your competence. That's the thing. So TG grammar measures the competence of the speaker of that language. Not performance. Performance is doing. Already we are seeing. And one more example we will do. A very simple but uh, uh, what we say is the simple but very common common transformation. Let's call it Sai. Sai. Symbol when I say Sai. Sai. What is Sai? You know? He is eating banana. Banana. Let's have a bigger food. Huh? So now Sai means auxiliary uh, subject auxiliary inversion. Doesn't mean subject. Subject auxiliary inversion rule. It's a rule system. Huh? TD is a rule system. Yeah, you are a, what is that? What do you know already? You are making explicit by rule system. So that is, is he is he eating banana? First of all, this is Sai Sai. Sai means Subject auxiliary inverse means changing the position. Here, subject first, second auxiliary, auxiliary first, second. So, like in this way, we have what eh? many rules. Already, I have given you some of the rules. No? Already, we know what, isn't it? In transformation, activity passive, we know the NB switch rule. Then, you have got to be an insertion rule. Okay. And then you have another one, what is that? Last one, by insertion. Yes. Uh, this is another side. Now, what happens in, in transformation is these are two different forms of the same sentence. So, this, these are two different forms of the same sentence. This is something very important because very often people think that these are different sentences. No, not at all. If you know TG, one of the advantages I'll tell you. Suppose you are asked to you are asked to uh, uh, make a question from a statement like this. Or you are asked to, what do you say, direct indirect, you know, when you are changing direct from indirect. He said, are you working there? And how will you transform, I mean, uh, rewrite in direct speech? You have to make it a statement, isn't it? Then, if you know the relationship between are you working there and you are working there, then it becomes easy. So it has a practical application also. Right? Okay. So then that is it. So the point here is the relationship between these two sentences. These are different forms of the same sentence. This is their different form. And same thing, not insertion rule. He is eating. Negative. He is Eating. The idea will be not insertion rule. You have to insertion rule. Then by that you add not here. Then he is not eating. And by contraction you say he isn't eating. So you know the once you know this, you master TG. The advantage is you can see these different forms of sentences, they are not different sentences, but they are different forms of the same basic sentence or what we call camel sentence. That's what we are, uh, we are achieving by studying 
to TG or by knowing rules of TG. What do you know already? You make uh, explicit. Things become clear to you. You have competence, you have this competence of making, but how? How that's the thing. What is the how? How are you going to explain this? Is he eating is a different form of he is eating. By you are you can say that by applying a rule psi. Psi means subject auxiliary inversion rule. This is the advantage of TG. Once again, you must understand, my dear friends, TG is not anything new. It doesn't bring any new things to you. But already things that you have, you know, you are making explicit. Okay? So we will again see other other uh, nuances or other uh, very interesting aspects of TG in the next few classes. Till then, 